Hey there, this is my first attempt at a YouTube tutorial and I wanted to take this opportunity to talk to you about a trick I discovered with Digital Performer and Contact and an efficient way to use aux tracks and aux sends coming from Contact through Digital Performer and end up all in one place. So I want to show you a basic Digital Performer project that I've created and the way that I have my contact um, stuff set up. So here's a really basic setup. I've got a MIDI track, an Irish flute, and that comes into my instrument track featuring a contact for instance. That's where my Irish flute lives. And that audio comes straight out. So what I also have are these effects aux tracks. First one has a proverb reverb plugin and the second a king w dub delay which is a delay plugin. Um, and those tracks are listening for signals on these buses FX1 and 2, FX3 and 4 and I've got two additional ones here as well if I need to use them in the future. So now if I want my flute to have reverb I can ask Digital Performer to send audio using this FX track to um, FX1. Okay. Similarly, I could send to my second FX track, which is just a delay at this point. The problem that we run into is, what if I have more than one instrument living inside this contact plugin? What if I want to apply more reverb to one of them, less reverb to another one? What if I want to apply delay to one and no delay to another? So, unfortunately, contact will just collect all, sorry, will collect all audio and just ship it through that one output so you have no control over it. So. What I'd like to show you is a way that you can have control over it, and that is by using the aux sends within contact. So here we've got four aux sends, and when I dial any of these up, we can look at the output section, and we'll see aux one, two, three, or four light up, depending on which one I... etc. Unfortunately, right now, those outputs aren't going anywhere meaningful. What I have here set up is 12 outputs in contact. In case I do want to send the primary signal coming out of an instrument, not directly out from the contact output, but to a separate output, which is now not going anywhere. So I've got 12 of those set up. I know some people do 16, but I typically don't use 16. And I've got 12 of these hardware outputs set up and then 13, 14, 15, 16. The last four hardware outputs out of contact are reserved for these four aux, um, aux channels. So right now, we're giving a little bit to aux one. It's not going anywhere. We need to create a place in DP for that aux signal to go so that it can connect with the reverb in Digital Performer. So what I'm going to do is create four more aux tracks. Name them really quickly. Contact 4.1 aux. Um, something like that. And we don't need that. Contact aux 1. Let's just do that. Okay, and now comes the annoying part. What I have to do is find those contact connections. Sorry about that. And here's the first one. That's the 13th pair coming out of contact. And here's the 14th pair coming out of contact. And as quickly as I can, feel free to scroll forward in the DVD. I 
complete this slightly tedious process once, and then I save a template later that includes this little efficiency hack. Okay, so now these four aux tracks are listening to the aux tracks in contact, but they need to pass the audio on to my primary effects tracks. And that's what these buses can do. So, just to reiterate that. Okay. So now, in the mixer, we've got audio coming out of contact in two places. Coming out of contact on the main output and coming out of contact on this aux track. And now finally this aux track has a place to go. It goes to this little pipe, which feeds into the main FX pipe. And voila, we have reverb on our flute. We can, if we want, add more reverb right within contact. And this is the digital performer reverb. Pretty neat, same with delay. Maybe we want less, etc. So now we finally have audio coming from within multi timbral plugins, from within audio channels, um, living in digital performer, and all coming to the same set of effects tracks. Now, the final thing I would recommend is not to keep all these aux tracks in my sequence, but rather move them all to V-Racks. So I move my instruments to one V-Rack. I like to keep my effects on another V-Rack. And my aux cables, so to speak, those tracks that are just passing audio from contact to digital performer on yet a third V-Rack. So now I've got three V-Racks and I have the ability to view or unview them uh, in an easily grouped way. So if you're like me and you have multiple instances of contact running in a session, you need to create these audio cables for each individual instance of contact. That's what I, why, I, why what I like to do is start my template with a lot of instances of contact in a V-Rack disabled already so I can enable them with all the cabling in place um, as needed. Well, hope that's been an enjoyable and informative lesson for you. And let me know if this approach works for you or if you have any suggestions for better ones. Thanks.